When Jesus had finished praying, he and his disciples crossed the Kidron Valley and went into a garden. Jesus had often met there with his disciples, and Judas knew where the place was. Judas had promised to betray Jesus, so he went to the garden with some Roman soldiers and temple police, who had been sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees. They carried torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus already knew everything that was going to happen, but he asked, Who are you looking for? They answered, We're looking for Jesus from Nazareth. Jesus told them, I am Jesus. At once they all backed away and fell to the ground. Jesus again asked, Who are you looking for? We're looking for Jesus from Nazareth, they answered. This time Jesus replied, I have already told you that I am Jesus. If I am the one you are looking for, let these others go. Then everything will happen just as I said. I did not lose anyone you gave me. Simon Peter had brought along a sword. He now pulled it out and struck at the servant of the high priest. The servant's name was Malchus, and Peter cut off his right ear. Jesus told Peter, Put your sword away. I must drink from the cup that the Father has given me. The Roman officer and his men, together with the temple police, arrested Jesus and tied him up. They took him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. This was the same Caiaphas who had told the Jewish leaders, It is better if one person dies for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. That disciple knew the high priest, and he followed Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest's house. Peter stayed outside near the gate. But the other disciple came back out and spoke to the girl at the gate. She let Peter go in, but asked him, Aren't you one of that man's followers? No, I'm not, Peter answered. It was cold, and the servants and temple police had made a charcoal fire. They were warming themselves around it when Peter went over and stood near the fire to warm himself. The high priest questioned Jesus about his followers and his teaching, but Jesus told him, I have spoken freely in front of everyone, and I have always taught in our meeting places and in the temple where all our people come together. I have not said anything in secret. Why are you questioning me? Why don't you ask the people who heard me? They know what I have said. As soon as Jesus said this, one of the temple police hit him and said, That's no way to talk to the high priest. Jesus answered, If I have done something wrong, say so. But if not, why did you hit me? Jesus was still tied up, and Anna sent him to Caiaphas, the high priest. While Simon Peter was standing there warming himself, someone asked him, Aren't you one of Jesus' followers? Again, Peter denied it and said, No, I'm not. One of the high priest's servants was there. He was a relative of the servant whose ear Peter had cut off, and he asked, Didn't I see you in the garden with that man? Once more, Peter denied it, and at once a cock crowed. It was early in the morning when Jesus was taken from Caiaphas to the building where the Roman governor stayed, but the crowd waited outside. Any of them who had gone inside would have become unclean and would not be allowed to eat the Passover meal. Pilate came out and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? They answered, He's a criminal! That's why we brought him to you! Pilate told them, Take him and judge him by your own laws. The crowd replied, We're not allowed to put anyone to death. And so what Jesus had said about his death would soon come true. Pilate then went back inside. He called Jesus over and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Are you asking this on your own, or did someone tell you about me? You know I'm not a Jew, 
Pilate said. Your own people and the chief priests brought you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom doesn't belong to this world. If it did, my followers would have fought to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. No, my kingdom doesn't belong to this world. So you are a king, Pilate replied. You are saying that I am a king, Jesus told him. I was born into this world to tell about the truth, and everyone who belongs to the truth knows my voice. Pilate asked Jesus, What is truth? Pilate went back out and said, I don't find this man guilty of anything, and since I usually set a prisoner free for you at Passover, would you like me to set free the king of the Jews? They shouted, No, not him! We want Barabbas! Now Barabbas was a terrorist. Pilate gave orders for Jesus to be beaten with a whip. The soldiers made a crown out of thorn branches and put it on Jesus. They put a purple robe on him. They came up to him and said, Hey, you, king of the Jews! Uh. They also hit him with their fists. Once again, Pilate went out. This time he said, I will have Jesus brought out to you again. Then you can see for yourselves that I have not found him guilty. Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the temple police saw him, they yelled, Nail him to a cross! Nail him to a cross! Pilate told them, You take him and nail him to a cross. I don't find him guilty of anything. The crowd replied, He claimed to be the Son of God. Our Jewish law says that he must be put to death. When Pilate heard this, he was terrified. He went back inside and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus did not answer. Why won't you answer my questions? Pilate asked. Don't you know that I have the power to let you go free or to nail you to a cross? Jesus replied, If God had not given you the power, you couldn't do anything at all to me but the one who handed me over to you did something even worse. Then Pilate wanted to set Jesus free, but the crowd again yelled, If you set this man free, you are no friend of the emperor. Anyone who claims to be a king is an enemy of the emperor. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out. Then he sat down on the judge's bench at the place known as the Stone Pavement. In Aramaic, this pavement is called Gabbatha. It was about midday on the day before the Passover, and Pilate said to the crowd, Look at your king! Kill him! Kill him! they yelled. Nail him to a cross! So you want me to nail your king to a cross? Pilate asked. The chief priest replied, The emperor is our king! Then Pilate handed Jesus over to be nailed to a cross. Jesus was taken away, and he carried his cross to a place known as the Skull. In Aramaic, this place is called Golgotha. There Jesus was nailed to the cross, and on each side of him a man was also nailed to a cross. Pilate ordered the charge against Jesus to be written on a board and put above the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The words were written in Hebrew, Latin and Greek. The place where Jesus was taken wasn't far from the city, and many of the Jewish people read the charge against him. So the chief priests went to Pilate and said, Why did you write that he is the King of the Jews? You should have written, he claimed to be king of the Jews. But Pilate told them, what is written will not be changed. After the soldiers had nailed Jesus to the cross, they divided up his clothes into four parts, one for each of them. 
but his outer garment was made from a single piece of cloth, and it did not have any seams. The soldiers said to each other, Let's not rip it apart. We'll gamble to see who gets it. This happened so that the scriptures would come true, which say, They divided up my clothes and gambled for my garments. The soldiers then did what they had decided. Jesus' mother stood beside his cross with her sister and Mary the wife of Clopas. Mary Magdalene was standing there too. When Jesus saw his mother and his favourite disciple with her, he said to his mother, This man is now your son. Then he said to the disciple, She is now your mother. From then on that disciple took her into his own home. The Death of Jesus Jesus knew that he had now finished his work, and in order to make the scriptures come true, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of cheap wine was there. Someone then soaked a sponge with the wine and held it up to Jesus' mouth on the stem of a hyssop plant. After Jesus drank the wine, he said, Everything is done. He bowed his head and died. The next day would be both a Sabbath and the Passover. It was a special day for the Jewish people, and they did not want the bodies to stay on the crosses during that day. So they asked Pilate to break the men's legs and take their bodies down. The soldiers first broke the legs of the other two men who were nailed there, but when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead and they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers stuck his spear into Jesus' side, and blood and water came out. We know this is true because it was told by someone who saw it happen. Now you can have faith too. All of this happened so that the scriptures would come true, which say, No bone of his body will be broken. And... They will see the one in whose side they stuck a spear. Joseph from Arimathea was one of Jesus' disciples. He had kept it secret, though, because he was afraid of the Jewish leaders. But now he asked Pilate to let him have Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission, and Joseph took it down from the cross. Nicodemus also came with about thirty kilograms of spices made from myrrh and aloes. This was the same Nicodemus who had visited Jesus one night. The two men wrapped the body in a linen cloth together with the spices, which was how the Jewish people buried their dead. In the place where Jesus had been nailed to a cross, there was a garden with a tomb that had never been used. The tomb was nearby, and since it was the time to prepare for the Sabbath, they were in a hurry to put Jesus' body there.